Hi kids, this is Lindsay. Alright, today we're going to go back and look at Unit 9 again. So, help me look at page 148 in your Our World. Go back to Our World, page 148. Do you have the book open? Okay, good. So, we're going to read it and look at it one more time. I'll talk about it. So, look at page 148. Do you like vacations with lots of people and noise? If they ask you that kind of question, that means if you say yes, they're going to tell you you should do this. If you say no, they're going to say, well, then you should do that. So it's an open question. Do you like vacations with lots of people and noise? Or places that are quiet with no people nearby? So they have ideas for you. <clears throat> it doesn't matter which kind of vacation you like they're going to give you some ideas. Let's find out about some cool vacations. So they're going to discuss with you different kinds of vacations that it doesn't matter what kind of person you are. A person who likes quiet places or a person who likes exciting places. <clears throat> Number one, the whole family can enjoy camping together. So if you're looking for a place to go on vacation that everyone can enjoy, well, this might be a good place for you because everyone can go camping together and spend time together. Bring a tent and sleep in the fresh air. We all know that in the forest or next to a river, in the mountains, maybe even at the beach, the air is fresh. You're outside of the city. So bring a tent and then sleep in the fresh air. What does that mean? They're telling you to do that. So, if you hike up a very big mountain, you have to take a guide with you. Now, look at the conditional here. This conditional says, if you really do this, this is not past tense. So, if you hike, if you really do that, if you hike up a very big mountain, you have to take a guide with you, or to help you. Now, I don't know what they mean. Do they mean a person or a book? Could be either one. They probably mean a person. Somebody to help you so you don't get lost. Do you like history? Go see the ruins of an old city. <clears throat> now here's the problem. Some people are not interested in this at all. When I was a little kid, very young, my father took us to old cities because he thought we would have a good time exploring the ruins. And we did, but my sister didn't. She hated it. She wasn't interested in that at all. She wanted to spend time camping in nature, uh, going swimming in the river, climbing mountains. But my brother and I loved to see the ruins of an old city. Different people like different things, right? So, do you like history? Go see the ruins of an old city. If you like the modern world, take a tour of a city. Now, what does that mean? For example, let's say you want to go to New York, and New York will have a tour, and that tour will have a bus that will take you to all the interesting places in New York City to see. That is called a tour bus. And the person who helps you is the tour guide. So you can take a tour of the city. Some people take a whole tour for the whole vacation. For example, if you're going to Japan, the tour company takes care of everything. They meet you at the airport and they give you your tickets. And after that, they tell you where to go and what to eat. That is a tour. So it's very convenient. If you take a tour to Japan, your hotel, your lunch, your dinner, your breakfast, every bus ride, go see this place, go see that place, everything is taken care of. You don't have to worry about anything. But some people don't like that kind of vacation. They feel it's not very free. Maybe the tour is always walking, or maybe they spend a lot of time on the bus, or maybe the hotel is not very nice and the restaurants are not 
really very good. So some tours are good, but some people don't like tours because different reasons, okay? Usually I don't take a tour. If I go to Japan, I go there by myself with my wife, of course. I go to Japan and we go to a hotel, we choose the restaurants, we look at the guidebook and we decide where to go. It's very easy now. You know, we have um, the apps on your phone, so it's very easy. You don't need to take a tour. But some people think it's convenient. Either way, some people like to take a tour, some people don't like to take a tour. So let's read the book. But if you like to learn how to protect the natural world, then an eco tour is for you. Now, I don't know a lot about eco tours, but I know about eco hotels. Um, sometimes you'll stay at a very nice hotel, and when you go there, they will tell you, this is an eco hotel. Now, what does that mean? That means that if you have a towel, they will wash the towel every day if you want them to. If you want them to wash the towel every day, then just throw it on the floor and the housekeeper will come and pick up the towel and they will give you a clean towel. But you know, at home you don't usually wash a towel every day. Maybe you'll wait two or three or four days to wash a towel because washing a towel every day wastes a lot of electricity and water. So in an eco hotel, if you hang up the towel, they won't wash it again. So you can save water. Now also the eco hotel, when you leave the hotel room, the lights, the television, the air conditioner will turn off by itself. Now most hotels want to save money, so everybody does that now. But before, only eco hotels did that. But now hotels understand, mm, it's a good way to save money. But it's also a good way to save the planet. So eco hotels try to <clears throat> be careful about wasting water and wasting electricity. So if you take an eco tour, maybe you can learn some ways to be better for the planet. All right, let's turn. A resort is a good place to relax and have fun on your vacation. And we talked about how a resort is different than a hotel. A resort has everything. There is a famous resort, maybe you've heard of it. That resort is called Club Med. It doesn't matter the name, but Club Med is very famous. Why? Because this resort <clears throat> has many hotels, many restaurants all together. And they give you a special bracelet you wear on your arm. And if you wear that, and the people can see that, everything is free. You can drink Coca-Cola and eat ice cream and dessert and pizza and steak and seafood. All the food is free. And everywhere you go, anything you want to play. If you want to ride the banana boats, it's all free. If you want to go swimming, if you want to jump out of an airplane, anything they have, all the activities are free. Well, not free, of course. That means the resort is one price. You pay a lot of money to go to this resort. But after you go there, it's like Disneyland. After that, everything is free. Well, of course, Disneyland, the food's not free. But all the activities are free. So if you really like to ride banana boats, you can go to a resort and you can ride the banana, banana boat a thousand times. You know, if you go to Kanding, the banana boats are very expensive. I think it's one time, it's $500, right? But if you go to a resort, all the activities, you can play tennis, you can play basketball, you can go swimming, you can, I don't care, you can ride horses, bicycles, everything in the resort is free because you already paid. So you can eat dinner all day or you can eat breakfast in the afternoon. A resort has everything. So you can relax and have fun and you don't worry about the price because you already paid for everything. But if you go to a resort and you sleep all day, oh my gosh, that's a waste of money, right? 
So a hotel is really just a place to sleep. Now, some hotels, of course, have swimming pools and exercise rooms, but they probably don't have activities. Okay? So a hotel is just a place to sleep, but a resort has everything. Maybe someday your family can go to Club Med. It's very expensive. All right, next one. Stay the night at a big hotel. Go to the beach to sit in the sun and swim. Uh, put on sunscreen so that your skin doesn't burn. This is important. If your skin burns, if you get a sunburn, then for the whole vacation you're going to be uncomfortable. A lot of people make that mistake. The first day they're so excited. Yay, beach, swimming pool. And they don't put on sunscreen. And they run around the resort and they go swimming, they do the banana boat, they have a lot of fun, maybe they ride horses. But the next day, they can't go outside because they have really bad sunburns all over their body. Their head will hurt, their face will hurt. Oh, it's difficult to sleep because you have a very bad sunburn. And then you can't have fun at the resort anymore and you waste a lot of time. So, if you go on vacation, remember to wear sunscreen. Put on sunscreen. Another way to say that is lotion. If you were in, in my class in third grade, we learned the word lotion. L-O-T-I-O-N. Sun lotion. Sunscreen. And we talked about it last time. When you use sunscreen or sun lotion, you have to look at the SPF. SPF is a number. And the higher the number, the better. Now what does that mean? If the SPF is 10, then you cannot stay in the sun very long. The number is very low. If the SPF is 30, well, it's better than 10, but still not very long. You want to find SPF 50 or maybe SPF 100. Then you can play in the sun a long time. But be careful. Water and sun and, you know, sand and running around and sweating, the sunscreen will come off. So every few hours, you have to put sunscreen on again. Once a day is not enough. This is important because you don't want to ruin the verb. You don't want to ruin your vacation. A sunburn will ruin your vacation. All right, let's look at the next one. Theme parks are full of people having fun. Now, amusement park and theme park, how are they not the same? Well, I told you. A theme park usually has one idea, like Harry Potter is all about Harry Potter and the books. So everything in that theme park, the food, the rides, the castle, everything is about Harry Potter. If you go to Legoland, Legoland is a theme park because everything is about Legos. But there are some places where they don't have a theme. It's just about riding the roller coasters, getting wet, playing on the rides. Those are amusement parks. If there is a big place for children and they have a merry-go-round and roller coaster, and no main idea, then it's an amusement park, not a theme park. Some people don't like theme parks. Like maybe you don't like One Piece, you know that cartoon One Piece. If you go there, everything in that theme park is about One Piece and you don't care. So maybe you would rather go to a different theme park or an amusement park. All right, let's read. Buy a ticket for an exciting ride. Now, buy a ticket. If you go to Disneyland, you buy one ticket at the gate. And after that, you don't have to buy any more tickets. All the rides are free. Of course, you have to stand in line for hours and hours and hours. But you don't need to buy a ticket again. But I'll give you an example. If you go to uh, Kaohsiung, there's a big department store. And that department store has lots of rides. 
It has a Ferris wheel and a, a little bus and a little train. Most of the rides are for kids. But the point is, every ride has its own ticket. So you have to buy a ticket every time you ride something. If you want to ride the Ferris wheel, you buy a ticket. If you want to buy the little ride the roller coaster, you have to buy a ticket. Now, if you want to ride it all day, this is not good for you. It will be very expensive. But let's say you're like, hey, we went shopping to the department store. I just want to ride the Ferris wheel one time. So you buy one ticket, and it's not expensive, right? So some amusement parks have one ticket, and some amusement parks you have to buy a ticket for every ride. So when they say buy a ticket, that's what they mean. Buy a ticket for that ride. Let's look at it. If the theme park is also a water park, get ready to get wet. You know, if you go to a water park, you do not take a raincoat or an umbrella. You take a swimsuit. And at a water park, Maybe they make waves, maybe there are slides, but you're going to get wet. So they joke and they say, get ready to get wet. You know you are going to get wet this day. All right, I want to ask some questions. For this page, let's ask some questions. Number one, in all the fifth grade classes, I don't know who you are, in the comments, please answer this question. What kind of vacation do you prefer? That answer would be, I prefer a vacation at the beach. I prefer a vacation at a resort. I prefer visiting old ruins. I prefer safari. All of those could be answers, but I want you to tell me, number one, what vacation do you prefer? All right, number five. Hmm, are safaris that shoot animals bad? Are safaris that shoot animals bad? You know they have guns. What do you think? Are they bad? All right, number 16, answer this question. Have you visited an expensive five-star resort before? Have you visited an expensive five-star resort before? Number 20, did you go to a water park when you were a little kid? Did you go to a water park when you were a little kid? Number 30, are you interested in history? Number 32, would it be fun to walk around the ruins? of an old city? Would it be fun to walk around the ruins of an old city? Now, let's ask some of the second conditional. Uh, number four, if you went to a resort, would you ride the banana boat many times? Number 18, if you went on a photo safari, would you take pictures with your cell phone? If you went on a photo safari, would you take pictures with your cell phone? Number 26. Is Legoland <clears throat> a theme park that you would like to visit? Is Legoland a theme park that you would like to visit. When you write Legoland, L-E-G-O-L-A-N-D, Lego is a big L, Legoland, L-E-G-O-L-A-N-D, one word. All right, number 12. Hmm. If you went to a modern city, would you take a tour or go by yourself? If you went to a modern city, would you take a tour or go by yourself? Number 24, if you hiked, S-H-I-K-E-D, if you hiked up a mountain, would you 
Alexa, stop. I had to stop the timer. Would, if you hiked up a mountain, would you take a gun with you? If you hiked up a mountain, would you take a gun with you? Okay, very good. We're going to stop there. The timer says stop. So see you tomorrow. Bye, kids.